Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about how to create the creator effect using Blender and PF Track. And we're also going to use Adobe After Effects for final compositing. So let's get started. So first, I started with PF Track to track the motion of my head. So for that, I loaded up the footage into PF Track. I love PF Track because it is not based and that, we, that means that you have like a no limit to track any kind of motion in PF Track. So first of all, I added some user tracker. The user tracker is basically manual tracker that you add manually into your face or whatever object you have in the scene. So I added 20 track into it and I tracked them manually frame by frame. And here you can see the list of all those 20 trackers that I added manually. It was a little bit harder, but I still managed to add all of them accurately and their position consistently. So yeah, that, that was the whole point behind adding manual tracker to have like a perfect motion. And then I added some auto tracker. Auto tracker is actually adding letting PF track to add some uh, automatic tracker into the face. I first masked out my face uh, on every frame and then uh, I told PF track to add trackers into that mask, which means that PF track will automatically add some tracker into it. And that was really good. And then after that, what I did, I just I just wanted to clean up stuff like I deleted the bad one. Then after that, I added a camera camera solver. And when I played, it was pretty accurate. The what what makes it accurate because like if you look at the 3d viewport you can see the point cloud is perfectly making my face and that means that my tracker is perfect and then i wanted to convert this camera data into an object data so i actually added an edit camera node into my auto tracker to actually create like a new sort of camera for the tracking data and then i combine these two nodes together with the mac object node which means that I actually converting a camera tracking data into an object. So that's how it works. And it might be confusing for you, but if you start learning PF track, it's going to be way easier than you think. So that's what, how I made uh, an object track in PF track. And then I wanted, I wanted to export this into Blender. So we're going to export it. But if, before we export it, we have to look at everything that is perfectly moving and all the stuff because we don't want any kind of error or glitch or whatever. So then I added an export node, which means that I can now export into Blender. I actually added a test object before I export this. I added a mushroom into my head. And as you can see, it's perfectly sticking into my face. And that's what I wanted. So after that, I wanted to export this data into Blender. In PF Track, you have got different type of format that you can export your data inside. But the one that I liked about uh, exporting data is DAE, which is called Colera. Which, which means that you can import this Colada data into Blender without any add-on and anything that, that can make you trouble. So I actually exported the data as a DAE file, which means that it will contain all the stuff it have, like the tracking points and you can say the, the point cloud. And then if I play the, the overall tracking, as you can see, it's perfectly doing its job and that's what I wanted. And after that, I actually liked that because, you know, that's super nice. I loved it. I want to play it again and again and again to see that is amazing. So then I go into Blender to model my the creator thing because I didn't find anything online. So I have to model this thing manually. So I added a cylinder object, extruded it many time. And like, uh, I'm not going to explain every single thing that I did for this model, but I'm going to go give you a very overall idea on how I model this. So as you can see, I extruded this outward. I added some inside detail, like this ring kind of things, which actually making it very detailed. And I really like this thing because it, it is really easy to make, but it adds so much into your 3D model that can make it perfect. And then I also auto smooth this thing. And then I added some outside detail, like extruding some faces down, some faces outside, adding some lines inside and adding some line outside. That's how I made managed to make this thing uh, here. So it's not the end here because we have to model all the stuff. So I actually, and uh, added some new uh, model into it. Like for example, I'm gonna add something into it that can make it perfect. And then this is what I went through. So I'm gonna speed up the things because I don't wanna have everything in my video. You can just see what is going on. Uh, so I actually extorted this thing outside many times to actually just get this type of shape. I'm not actually good at modeling. I'm not a professional modeler, so I don't know the rules of best topology. So that's why I'm just going to model very random thing. I don't care about topology because I don't. So why not? And then if you look at the topology of my model, it is really messed up. As you can see, it's it's not good. It's not good, though. So I actually like try to have like that kind of shape that I can see in the reference. 
So I'm not going to be extremely perfect with it because I'm not a 3D model, but I will try to be one. I don't know. Uh, sorry, 3D modelers, but I don't know how to model it. So yeah, I'm just modeling it randomly in the skill that I know about 3D modeling. There must be a good way than that that you can talk about in the comment section or whatever. But I liked to model this thing like that. And I added some more detail into it and try to be perfect with it. Because as you can see, like I added some downside detail into the 3D model. And yeah, that, that's how it works. So now I added some extra detail into it, like the top of it. And I just want to make it finalized at this stage because I think it's done. I'm not going to be very perfect with it because like now it looks fine to me. Uh, it might look bad to you because I know it's really bad, but I don't know. I don't know. It looks good to me though. So I actually added some more details into the top of it and some other stuff that can make it look really better and make push it to the next level uh, i'm not i'm not i'm not saying that it's the best model but i'm just saying that it's good yeah and then i actually added some extra things i actually added this bolt uh, what it calls screw i don't know 
but I actually added this tool because it, it's add a little bit of detail into it. And it's a very simple object. It's actually a cylinder object, so it's not really a complex geometry to like not model it, but it's a very small detail. I don't know how well how will notice this, but I'm actually adding it into my scene, so I don't care about it. And I actually added some uh, other details uh, down there. I actually wanted to add some more detail in there. I actually added a pipe in there that is actually going down. I don't know what it used for, but I'm just adding it, so I don't know. <laughs> and then what I actually did, I actually like uh, tried to mo model it manually. And uh, this is how it looks like. And actually, I like I like to extrude things down and, you know, I actually added a pipe, so that's how it works. And then I added some sort of rings into the pipe, which actually looks like that. And this is actually an error modifier with curve, you know, to follow the curvature of the pipe here. And that looks good to me. Okay, so what of that? We are going to add some more objects into it to make it a little bit detailed down there. And then I photo scan myself at the same location to have the same lighting on myself, but I actually don't like the model. So what I actually did, I actually only uh, isolated the head using Boolean modifier of the cube and deleted the half of the body down there and applied the modifier and then deleted the cube too. And as you can see, my, my hat is just remaining there and that's what I wanted. And now I actually added another cube here to uh, cut out my head, to have like the half of my head in there and half to be removed. And as you can see, it's perfectly doing its job. And that's what I wanted because I want to add my machine thing into it that is actually making it a robotic. And then I actually imported all the data into Blender, including the tracking data as well. And I think it's looking really good. Okay, so I'm actually uh, in the other camera view. I'm going to change my camera to something else. So let me just go ahead and change the camera to the PF track camera. So now if you look at this model, as you can see, it's perfectly tracking into the face of the 3D model and that's what I wanted. So now it's time to add our machine stuff into it to make it really good. And then uh, let's talk about the model. I actually removed the uh, material from the photo scan. I actually added the footage. I actually UV projected the footage in my, into my face, uh, which means that it will have like the same kind of moment, the same kind of eye sort of thing. You, I added a UV project node to that model to actually project my video into that model. So it's accurately following the video, you know. So that's how I did this effect. And then after that, I actually added some other machine object into my scene. And I'm going to turn them on so you can see them. I actually added another slime object into it, which actually work as, uh, you can say, as a wire going up there. And then I added uh, an armature into it to add a little bit of moment into it, small details that you don't notice, but actually help a lot. And then I added some other stuff into it. I'm going to turn them on one by one so you can see what I have added. I added some glosses. I don't know how they works, but I actually added them and they're really random. And yeah, that's how I added all the stuff together to make this kind of the creator effect. And it's, it was like uh, really, really interesting to work with because I got to learn so much from it. And that was, that was that was good, okay. And those are all the objects that I actually added to my scene, and then exported these into After Effects. And we'll also talk about how I did the um, clean plating thing. So, so that's what I got uh, in my Blender scene. As you can see, if you play it, everything is following perfectly, and that's what I wanted. So after that, we gotta export this data into Bl into After Effects because we have to do some sort of cleaning thing, you know what I mean? So I actually made a clean plate here uh, using just simple technique. You can also take a picture of the uh, set that you're working with. Then I um, removed my head using rotoscoping from the actual footage because I don't need it. I actually have one in the 3D environment, so I don't need the head. And then I actually added some color into it to actually like fill in the gap. And then I added my CG object into it, which is actually having my face and the machine there. And my face is actually my footage, so I don't care about it. Then I actually rotoscope the front area of my body to actually bring it to the front. And then I added a shadow layer, or you can say the shadow pass here to actually add some shadows into it. And that's the whole process behind it. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.